This is the new Mercedes E-Class. It's longer, wider and much more luxurious than ever and it comes with loads of new technology borrowed from Mercedes flagship saloon, the S-Class. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this new car. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. It's very easy to tell this new E-Class apart from the old model. Just look at that front end. The old car had a rounded grille with a chrome bar across the middle and a few shiny inserts. This new car has a much taller grille with a chunky silver frame all the way round. You can choose from two different designs depending on whether you like chrome or you absolutely adore the stuff. The AMG line has a big Mercedes badge, a horizontal chrome bar and hundreds of tiny three-pointed stars. The exclusive trim has a more retro vibe. You get three chrome bars across the grille and an old school Mercedes badge sticking out of the bonnet. I actually prefer the first design because without the big badge in the middle of the grille, that big black plastic panel which houses all the autonomous sensors just really stands out and looks odd. But I suppose you can distract people's eyes away from this blemish by paying extra for LED strips that run along the edges of the grille. Though these will make the car seem less classy and more showy. The new LED headlamps are quite cool though. These have a double bubble shape with two new separate strips of daytime running lights underneath which make them look quite aggressive. I'm not sure about the black surrounds though which then blend into a surround for the grille. It's as though the car is wearing a Batman mask. Mercedes says this mask feature takes inspiration from the EQS and EQE electric cars but I think it looks a bit weird on a car with an actual radiator grille. It's much harder to spot the design upgrades down the side of the new E-Class though. However the car has some pop out door handles just like on the new S-Class and the crease under the windows is split into two halves with a gap in the middle part of the car left completely smooth. But that's the extent of the changes at the sides. However, there are a range of new alloy wheels with sizes ranging from 17 inches, which will be way too small, all the way up to 21 inches. Round the back, the brake lights get a similar double bubble design to the headlights and each light has a three pointed star design inside. And there's a full width chrome strip that reminds me of the old S-Class Coupe. A good looking car was that. Anyway, I don't mind chrome, but I don't like the fake exhaust trim on the lower bumper. Now I'm not sure if the real exhausts are hidden within or if the surrounds are just completely fake. I will need to deploy the car wow stick of truth to be certain. Overall though, I do like the look of the new E-Class. It's been modernized, yet retains some of the conservative elegant look of its predecessors. But what do you think about the new car's design? Do you love it? Or do you prefer the BMW 5 Series or Audi A6? I've actually put a pinned comment below so you can vote on your favorite posh German saloon. The new Mercedes E-Class is packed with loads of new technology the old model could only dream of. Just check out the huge screen. Now it's not quite as large as the hyper screen you get in the new EQS. And that's why Mercedes has branded this screen in the E-Class as the super screen. You do have to pay extra for the third display for the front passenger. It comes as part of the Entertainment Plus pack, which also includes 5G connectivity. This means the front passenger can watch TV, YouTube or TikTok without using their phone. Speaking of which, if you don't follow CarWow on TikTok yet, click the link appearing in the top right hand corner of the screen. Alternatively, follow the link in the description. We upload unique car content there you won't want to miss out on. However, there is one slight problem. All this social media streaming might be a bit distracting for the driver, but Mercedes has thought about this. The passenger screen only works if the car detects someone sitting in the actual passenger seat. And there are five interior cameras that spy on the driver and can tell if they're looking over at the passenger screen. And then the car will automatically dim that screen. Though I do think that this could sort of spoil the whole viewing experience for said passenger. Maybe Mercedes should have just used a privacy screen cover like people in the human resources department of most companies use when they're looking at employee salary spreadsheets on their desktops so that no one can see what other people earn. Anyhow, the E-Class gets a new feature for the interior mood lighting. Mercedes has programmed the lights so they can flash and change colour in time with the music playing on the stereo. This would be fine if it was a free gimmick, but it's actually a paid for optional extra and it isn't even original. 
you can get something similar on the new BYD Atto 3 small Chinese SUV. So much for Mercedes innovation, looks like the Europeans are now copying the Chinese rather than the other way around. The new E-Class comes with a range of petrol, diesel and plug-in hybrid engines. And every version of the new car comes with a 9-speed automatic gearbox as standard. The range kicks off with a couple of mild hybrid cars with 2.0-litre four-cylinder engines. Each one has a new battery that gives their electric motors more power and more torque than in the old outgoing E-Class mild hybrids. There are also a couple of new plug-in hybrid models with similar 2.0-litre four-cylinder engines. These come with a new 25 kilowatt hour battery pack that you can fully charge in half an hour as they can charge up to 55 kilowatts using a DC charger. These cars also come with a new electric motor that has 129 horsepower. And that's enough poke to power the new E-Class up to 87 miles an hour without any internal combustion engine intervention at all. Though if you do drive the car at those speeds using the motor alone it will sort of kill the electric only range which is claimed to be 62 miles well if you're careful but what about a high performance amg hybrid well mercedes hasn't confirmed anything yet but it has said it will build a flagship six cylinder e-class at some point now this could morph into a new amg e63 using the same hybrid technology as the four cylinder c63 and the v8 s63 obviously the e-class would then use a six cylinder petrol engine as the ice component now I'll do a whole video on that car when it finally arrives so if you hadn't done so already make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you'll know when I upload that video. So then, what sort of performance do you get from these new engines? Well, the diesel E220D has 197 horsepower and it will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 7.6 seconds. That's if you get a rear wheel drive version of the car. The 4Matic all wheel drive model is a little bit heavier and so it's 0.2 of a second slower 60 miles an hour. There's also a 204 horsepower E200 petrol. This only comes with rear wheel drive and it does 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds. The E300 E plug in hybrid has 313 horsepower. It does 0 to 60 in 6.4 seconds for the rear wheel drive model and 6.5 seconds for the all wheel drive car. The quickest E class from launch will be the E400E. This has 381 horsepower and comes with all wheel drive as standard. It does 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5.3 seconds. Mercedes didn't just upgrade the engines for the new E-Class, it also rebuilt the whole chassis to make the car more luxurious and easier to live with. For starters, they took the old E-Class chassis and stretched it, so there's now 22 millimeters more room between the front and rear wheels. And most of this extra length goes to the back seats, where passengers have 17 millimeters more legroom than in the outgoing car. But as we all know, it's not all about length. The new E-Class has a bit more girth too. According to Mercedes, there's 25 millimeters more room for everybody's elbows, and that means it has almost the same amount of shoulder room as an S-Class. The new Mercedes E-Class comes with normal core spring suspension as standard, but you can pay extra for adaptive air suspension. Now that's nothing unusual, it's actually the same story with the outgoing E-Class. But this new model comes with optional rear wheel steering for the first time ever, just like you can get on the S-Class and the EQS. This can actually turn the rear wheels at up to 4.5 degrees and that reduces the turning circle of the car by 90 centimeters. That's handy if you do a lot of city driving or you regularly need to park in tight car parks. Besides the massive screens, the cabin in the new E-Class has plenty of features inspired by the larger Porsche S-Class. The raised center console is very similar to that car and so is the steering wheel with touch sensitive pads on the spokes, which I absolutely hate because they're a bit fiddly to use. You can also get the cabin decked out with loads of different materials, alternative colors and special inlays. Entry level cars have seats made from recycled foam and undyed alpaca wool. Hopefully it won't make the car smell like a South American farmyard, but if you prefer you can have good old fashioned leather instead. You can also get parts of the center console finished in open pore wood which will look very nice or you can opt for piano black plastic instead though if it's the stuff like mercedes has previously used in its cars this no doubt will scratch very easily 
Mercedes has kitted out this new car with loads of technology designed to make it easy and stress-free to drive. You get adaptive cruise control as standard, along with lane keeping assistance and speed limit detection. At last, it seems Mercedes has finally decided to stop charging its customers extra for this feature, which is something that has been standard on a bog standard Toyota Yaris for years. Now, the new E-Class also comes with the latest version of Mercedes Park Assist that can slot the car into parallel and base spaces faster than ever. Now, it needs to be able to do it faster faster than before because these systems are usually so blooming slow that you can't be bothered to engage them, so they're pointless. Maybe this one will be better. I'll find out when I drive the car. You'll also be able to get the new E-Class with something called Intelligent Parking Pilot. This lets the car valet park itself without anyone in the driver's seat. Basically, you get out of the car and it just toddles off and parks itself, hopefully without curbing its own alloy wheels. There is actually a bit of a caveat to all that. You see, the technology requires a specially mapped out car park in order to work, and it's also not legal in every country, such as the United Kingdom. But it doesn't matter if you can't use the feature. Mercedes also gives you an app on your phone so you can drive the car in and out of tight spaces, you know, just like you can with a Tesla. Though hopefully the German system won't be quite so glitchy. There are plenty of other high-tech features on this new E-Class too, and lots of them can be downloaded using over-the-air software updates. This means you can pay a one-off fee or a monthly subscription to access features you either couldn't afford or thought you didn't need when you first bought the car. These include a trailer assist feature to help you reverse with a trailer attached, and a new program for the LED headlights that can project warning symbols onto the road ahead. You can also add stuff like traffic sign recognition and augmented reality satellite navigation directions with a software update. It looks like the car industry is going the same way as the car video game industry, where you have to constantly pay extra to unlock features. Mercedes is also jumping on the AI bandwagon with this new E-Class, and it'll use this to monitor your daily routine. Don't worry though, the car isn't spying on you and selling your secrets to foreign governments. Honestly, it's not. Instead, it learns which features you use, and it can automatically switch them on so you don't have to. For example, if you use the heated seats and massage functions on your commute, it can automatically switch them on at the same time and place every day. There's also a camera built into the middle of the car's new dashboard. This apparently lets you make zoom calls through the car's new super screen infotainment system, though hopefully it doesn't let you see video while you're driving. Bizarrely, you can also use this camera for taking selfies. Now, I don't know why you'd ever need that, but Mercedes thought it was a good idea for some reason. Maybe I should film a review of the car using that selfie camera. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to try and do this. Finally then, we come to the price and release date. So the new E-Class will go on sale in Europe this summer. Mercedes hasn't actually revealed exactly how much it will cost yet, but as with everything in life these days, you can bet it'll be more expensive than the outgoing model. After all, those new engines and technology upgrades aren't gonna come cheap, are they? This means that entry-level E200 models will probably set you back more than 50,000 pounds. What if you fancy an estate instead of a saloon? Well, there'll be one of them along before the end of 2023, and it'll cost a few thousand pounds more across the range. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, I've picked a couple out for you there. I think you'll like it. Just click on those windows to watch them. Or if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by hitting the Carwell logo there. Simple.